first turn speaking. We'll soon be back on patrol in the Adriatic, where for the next 10 days, we'll again be enforcing the UN arms embargo against merchant shipping bound for the former Yugoslavia. Before we get there, however, and because we're nearing the end of our Mediterranean summer, I'm stopping the ship for one hour to allow the ship's company a final chance for hands to bathe. That's all. Yo, one, two, three. No, you don't catch me going hands to bay, I'm afraid. It's, uh, if you can't touch the bottom, I don't go in. There's things in there that crawl up your bum and have wild parties, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's horrible. Oh! Oh! Okay! Bum the way! Okay, now a death charge. Dabba dabba do! Here we go! Oh! Stopping a warship oh! like ours, dead in the water, probably doesn't seem like the right thing to do with it. Without ship, but it's um, part of naval life. Something that's been done for time and memorial. And again, it's uh, just glad that we can still find the time now and again to do it. Tremendous fun, has to be. It's a real chance for ship's companies thinking about the routines, working hard in the morning, working hard in the afternoon. It's good for morale. Climbing up Albanian close in position uh, 006 decimal 2, TAC 020. Hands to boarding stations, hands to boarding stations. This is Watchman 90. I intend to send a boarding party to examine your manifest and cargo in accordance with the United Nations Security Council Resolution 820. No harm will be done to your vessel, your crew, or your cargo. Over. Yes, understand. Okay. Volta Bolt 218, this is Watchman 90. Continue on your current course and speed. Over. Whereas in the uh, area of Montenegro to the north, we were providing a ring of steel around Montenegro and looking for the dedicated violator coming in from the west and also monitoring. Yugoslavian naval and air activity. Down here in the Tranto, our job is to sanitize all of the shipping that comes into the Straits of Tranto, which is a, a choke point of the um, ships coming into the Adriatic, and to challenge them, you know, find out who they are, what they're carrying. This is the BBC World Service. Yep. The United Kingdom is to maintain its contribution to Operation Sharp Guard, enforcing the UN arms embargo on the countries of former Yugoslavia. Warships from 14 nations, including Britain, are continually boarding and searching merchant shipping in the Adriatic, ensuring that no arms or ammunition gets through to the warring factions. So far, over 31,000 ships have been challenged. Because of the latent threat to boarding parties, the Royal Navy is sending in advance units of specially trained Royal Marine commandos to secure merchant ships. Keep going forward and right. Keep going forward. One yard. Give us this in. Ropes going now. Back and right. Two yards. Keep going back. Keep going back. Keep going back. Okay, first man's going now. First man is out the door. Go back one yard. Back one yard. Okay, good position. Hold position there. Second man is going. Good position. Go forward one yard. Third man is going now. Good position. Enforcing the no-fly zone of Bosnia. Operation Shark Guard has met with considerable success as a deterrent against gun running. And it is thought that the sea route into the Adriatic is effectively closed to the armed smugglers. Just 18 months ago, the merchant ship Jadran Express was diverted to Brindisi in Italy, where customs officials discovered containers full of rocket-propelled grenades, thousands of rounds of ammunition, and other significant military hardware. We've got about two-thirds of the upper deck compartment. Roger, will do. The bottom hall, a solid pack of oranges. Search team two, over. Max nearly finished on the bottom hold. Sierra 1, hold number 3 clear, returning crew member to crew room, returning then to bridge. Master, thank you very much for your help and uh, hope you have a good voyage on, on your way to Rijeka. It's a job. You know, I mean, you do your best you can at it. Working as a team, and a ship is sent to a place to do a job. 
and a team effort all the time. You've got to fit in with a team. It's like ants, I suppose. Ants have got their own little community inside whatever ant lives in. People were sent down to Falklands. My brother went down there, he was sunk on the Arden. Luckily he came back. But he was sent down there, he probably didn't have heard of the Falklands before he went down there. It was a job, he had to go and do it. I was not to reason why. So, what you mean is, Mickey, yours is to do or die? You said that, not me. A merchant vessel Calliope, uh, international call sign, uh, 3 Echo Charlie, Echo 6. This is Watchman 9-0. I intend to send a boarding party to examine your manifest and cargo in accordance with the United Nations Security Council Resolution 820. Last night it was extremely painful. How does it feel looking at bright lights this morning? You seem to be a lot more comfortable. Well, I, I, th I can't, I'm not sure with guns or... I can look at it. I don't know, right. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm hard yes. on it. Yes, I'm thinking slightly more yeah. than I had the other one, but not much. Yeah, right, sure. So it's, you've got it in a condition where it's, mm. it's functioning again as of now. Yes. Yeah. How much can I use it? Well, um, obviously, I, I don't want you to strain your eye any more than normal. You're putting more strain on your eye at the moment because your pupil is dilated. Officer Cleo, uh, motor vessel Kluger now bears, um, it's down to the south of the rendezvous position. Um, she's got to move north. Uh, it's got nine and a half miles to run. And she should be there by approximately 0945 local. To make sure a boarding team are happy with those targets. The orange one's a tanker. Below it, yeah, yeah. it's 5115. 5115. Five. Below it to the right. Alright, alright, I'm gonna have fire. Calm down, woman. I can't help it. Yeah, I know what you're like. Do you hear, do you hear? Yeah. Because of fire drill and man overboard exercise, first sitting for lunch today will be later, at 13.30. Second sitting at 14.30. That's all. We're the biggest morale booster on board yeah. this ship. If the food's good, they're happy. But sometimes they don't appreciate the actual work you have to put in to produce that food. Yeah. Only branch in the Navy that's inspected 365 days a year, yeah. three times a day, yeah. without a doubt. We've always got to be on time. The ship's routine. Yeah. I'll go to cock. If we don't produce a meal on time, yeah. then the whole it has a knock-on effect on the whole ship's company. Stop challenges. Call for me 2506. Vessel Kuga. This is Watchman 90, Channel 73, over. I intend to send a boarding party to examine your manifest in accordance with the United Nations. P U T X N A D H F D. I'm now starting to struggle. F T D F W. It's getting pretty blurred. Right, sir. Does it feel blurred to you? Yeah, it feels more blurred than normal. Well, oh, it's much worse than normal. Yes. Normal. I mean, it's not. It's not hurting looking there. I just can't read it. <laughs> Well, Vessel Kluger, you are requested to provide a pilot ladder to the waterline on your port side, sir. Over. Yes, I understood, sir. You are piloted on port side, port side. Uh, Roger, sir. Of your 17 people on board, have you any women or children? Over. Some people know exactly how hard you work in the galley. You know, the odd time they'll come in and they'll say, Christ, I'm glad I'm not a chef. Yeah. But a lot of them are just plain assholes. They ain't got quite no... Good, they're quite good on here, actually. I mean, the, the one thing you want is to beat the bastards, to put it bluntly. You want them to come to the door and say, cheers, chef, that was excellent. You know, that's what the whole game's about. Like, you open that counter, you've got six choices there, and they say, is that it? You know, and you've been working for them in ten hours, you know you've got another three to go. You know, that's where you start getting a bit irate. That's, yeah, that's when the stress becomes yeah. intense. <laughs> I'm just trying to make it more comfortable yes. for you, really, so... Cow pie again, cookie? They know when they've upset you. I mean, chefs used to run the Navy. There's so many things you can do as a chef. And if you've got the chief cook on your side, you know, the others aren't going to beat you. What can you do? They don't get anything, do they? If you come back, I mean, you've got to feed them, obviously, but if they come back and ask for seconds, nah, no chance. No? What's the grub like? Very good. Can't complain. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm not saying there's any difficulty, but yeah. if we've heard that far north, it sounds like we'll have, certainly have to do so, haven't we, to achieve the handover. 
I was almost having to bully him yesterday to uh, have his eye drops in every two hours. You know, I've got to sort of temper that with them, um, showing the normal sort of marks of respect, etc., to a, to a senior officer. An eye is a very delicate organ. I don't want to take any risks with that. And I was in two minds about whether or not I ought to send him ashore for some specialist treatment. But um, really, that's only something to be undertaken when you really, you know, have run out of ideas on board. With the captain, you know, that's a very sort of major decision to have to make, really. Transport stations, transport stations. This is Watchman 90. What was that? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, sir. What was that? Say. What was that? Say. I believe the Navy would be a contract leader. Thirteen rounds at the target of Frontier in your own time. Go on. How's your ride this morning, then, sir? It's, it's not as bad. It's less red than yesterday, isn't it? Yeah. A lot less red than yesterday, but perhaps slightly redder than it was it, towards the end. It of seems yesterday. over the day it got slightly sore, but it's. Yeah. Does it feel gritty at all? So no, but it it, at the end of yesterday, as I say, at the end of yesterday, it yeah. got on the gritty side. Right. But it's, um, Does your vision feel blurred at all now? What do you recommend coming right? Yes, the... slightly. Very springs. Very springs. Very springs. Very springs. No evidence of any damage occurring towards the back of your eyes there. Right, so, um, I'll just do as we did before, dilate your pupil, and uh, put some more of the steroid eye drops in as well. Okay, if you could just hold your upper eyelid up. Fourteen seconds, resetting the system. All positions, Captain. Pony! Stop charges. Action links, action links. Action links. Broadcast. Action links. Action links. I am not sure. Switched on to you, still two crew members on deck. And she's starting to turn now, sir. Starboard. Yes, no. Selection goes to Sagolda. This is Watchman 90, Channel 73. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. I hear you. Uh, this is Watchman 90. Good morning. I intend to send a boarding party. What is worrying me about this? The meat and fish would run down seven days, which is fine. Yeah. Vegetables, 11 days. Yeah. Which is not fine. But this is nearly two weeks. Potatoes, nearly two weeks. Why, do you think? Right, I would say the change in the season is the main reason. People have, have stopped training, the weather's changed, they're now eating more. It's also five months since we left the UK. They're getting bored with the routines, especially being a defence watches. Right, well, what I want you to do is keep a very careful watch on this. I don't want to exercise strict portion control just yet. It's been fine up until now, but I can't afford to have that every week. I appreciate the change in the season. I was expecting it, really, I suppose. Mm. It may just be a blip. That's the gold, though. No harm will be done to your vessel, your crew, or your cargo. Over. I have a I have a so Golda, this is Watchman 90. There is still one man by the ropes at the stern. There is one man by the ropes at the stern. It is dangerous for him to stay there because my helicopter will come to that position. Do you understand? Over. I understand you. I understand you. Thank you. Well, please have that man move 
inside. That man must move inside your ship. Over. This is when it gets frustrating to try and understand the English. Well, significant difference in um, crew management and discipline between the various ships you call, isn't there? This one is as bad as we've seen, I would imagine, yeah, yeah. in terms of controlling people. Yeah. Although there is a large crew. Oh, Point out to the captain that we're monitoring it. That we won't let it go much beyond this. I want the catering balance to stay in credit. Yeah, we'll do so. Um, after all this time, we've managed it. We've managed it pretty well. I don't want to lose it now. Nor do I want to starve the ship's company. So just keep an eye on it for me. Right. Me hear anything now? Nope. I still see one man on your stern. Over. Please stay. Please stay again. I can still see one man on your stern. Over. Come on, come on, man. That is correct. Please have him move. Over. The most important thing is to um, detect. Do you know? In, yeah. In, into which quadrant of the buttocks do you actually do the right upper quadrant? Yeah. That's to avoid the sciatic nerve that runs down inside the buttock, just deep to the buttock muscle. Okay, so if you actually drew a sort of square on his buttock, it would be like that. So you'd do it until about there, yeah, to that sort of rather nasty piece of acne. <laughs> right, put your left hand on the actual buttock itself. It just helps you to coordinate yourself. Yeah. And then just quickly stab down straight away. Oh, Lord. You want to actually push it in slightly deeper. That's fine. Okay, now put it out quickly. That's fine. Is he moving yet? So, Golder, Watchman 9-0. Uh -huh. What was that? Is um, it still in there? It's coming out. It's coming out. <laughs> really quite painful, actually. <laughs> lesson is amputating the arms. <laughs> it's the last time I volunteered for any of your duties. Right, we're just going to go through that again then. <laughs> <laughs> this is Watchman 90. Have you told your man to move? Over. I don't think he's hiding as much as he's <laughs> standing one going down on the ladder. We don't have one crew member coming down from the bridge making his way up. He's just said something to the guy on the arm deck and he is still standing I think give it two minutes early should get the message. But I do not want that man. That man must go inside. My boarding officer will come to the bridge when he is on board and speak to you. I do not need one man to meet my team. Over. Thank you. We're on the uh, same wavelength, I think. One crew member still hiding behind the ropes on the after deck. <laughs> <laughs> Get my telescope in. His language is obviously limited, but I can't speak much Latvian. Chief Engineer. Yeah, 
I am scoreboard. Yeah. Toby can. No, he cannot. Yes, he can. No, he's not. He's on your side. He's D-hot. Did I just not put something out to you? I'm a No, you did. Come on. Come on. Who's got a pen? I can borrow. You might have asked me. Oh, that's what I meant. Hey, well, hang on a minute. Close your eyes, my car without even consulting me. Michelle. No consideration for others. That's always been one of your failings. Will you belt up? Oh, yes. Oh. He's happy enough to take my money. Let me pay for your holiday away, won't you? I'll see you get that back. One of the things I found out here on Sharp Guard is that you end up working so hard that you become, you end up becoming ineffective. The regime for the operations officer is quite punishing, really. Throughout this 10-day patrol, for example, I would get three or four hours sleep a night, and I would be working all that other time, you know, including 12 hours in the operations room. The regime that I work at the moment it takes me completely out of my environment as an officer. I feel that sometimes that I live in a vacuum. Actually, a very nice uh, ritual of everybody sitting down uh, in, in the mess together is something that I'm deprived of um, in defence watches. Uh, I don't like that, but that's uh, something I have to deal with. I meant to phone before coming away and say, right, I want to set when I come back, and I haven't done that. Some are born officers, you can see that as soon as they join. And you've got some that are just in their element being looked after because mummy's always done it and now they haven't got to go, they've gone straight from home to this and someone else is looking after them, which is us. So they haven't got to do anything for themselves. If they were left to fend for themselves, I don't think they'd be able to half of them because they haven't got this, they've got all the brains but no common dog which is the difference, which is probably where your ratings have got common sense and maybe some of them haven't got a lot of brains and then your officers have got all the brains but no common sense. I'd rather have the common sense on it. It's got to be. I couldn't live like that. Not, not for the fact that you're being, someone's looking after you. That's all right, I mean, everyone enjoys going out for a meal and being served and pampered and all that, don't you? But it's, I just couldn't live like they do. It's all false. I mean, if half of them act like that when they get home, then they're going to have their marriages. Fine. <laughs> there is a class system. There's still them and us, and you're always going to get that. You get that in Civil Street, and you get that in the Navy as well. I have, yes. There's a really good one, and I, which I know I will feature in. It's called Well Life on One Day. It's like a Good evening, First Lieutenant speaking. At the moment, we are 15 miles to the northwest of Law Harbour in area Ethel. Looking ahead to tomorrow, we have the major store ship with the Royal Fleet Auxiliary ship Port Austin, where we'll be going up alongside at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and taking on stores from her. There will be a clear lower deck at 9.30 tomorrow morning and Port Austin and conduct a replenishment at sea with stores coming over by heavy jack stay and helicopter and the Smrasa has confirmed that included should be English beer, fresh milk, and at last, proper sausages. That's all. Very good. Right. Range. English beer, Mickey. Happy with that? <laughs> <laughs> Is this place empty knickers? <laughs> <laughs> Set. Both moves ahead. Stand by on the knickers. So I'm not here to teach you to suck eggs. You've probably all seen them before. It's a ras, so do be careful. Um, it's a bonus for us to get to use Fort Austin. It's part of the UK National Group. We're a British ship, but we weren't expecting to get access to it. They're doing us a favour. They're very keen to help us. And the stuff in the end is yours. Uh, you're going to eat it. You're going to wear it, provided it's not food. Think of it as Christmas. It may be a long raz. It may not be as long as all that. We'll see, uh, we'll see how it goes. Thank you very much. Don't all leg it, please. One other thing, please, sir. Safety. Remember, when you're working in the upper deck, stay away from any moving ropes, any coils, any bites on a deck. Don't go near the dump unless you're nominated by a member of the dump party to assist. 
then you also need hazardous duty life jackets. <laughs> Anybody that's going to be working with ropes, take your rings off. It's not very nice walking around with four fingers. Any questions? Everybody happy? Try on, gentlemen, listen to the pipes. Ladies as well. You must be joking. No, I'm not, sir. It's, um, don't worry, I've done some work too. So right. I've done some work on it. Yes. Yeah. The, um, she bears, uh, 203 at 32 miles at present, sir. Yes. I've got onto Oscar Sierra, told them we're just about to start. Yes. And I've asked her if she would be happy to slow this vessel down to her minimum speed. What's her speed at the moment? Her speed at the moment is 10 knots. Yes. Stay one six zero, sir. Pull that four two. Pull that four two, sir. sir. Well, down to the um, southwest and a bearing a 220, we've got um, what is now a potentially violating vessel called the Magellan Rex. And she's uh, coming towards Area Ethel at 14 knots. And rather unfortunate timing because we're just about to um, start the replenishment, uh, which is very important for us. But we've still got to do the boarding. There's a classic uh, conflict here between uh, actually replenishing the ship and still being a warship and getting away and doing our job patrolling our area. We're going to have to uh, delay the boarding a wee while while we replenish. Valid, John LaRidge. Surface, Pimo. Surface, sir. What's the range and bearing of the Magellan Rex now? Presently, she's uh, bearing 220, sir, at 21.2 nautical miles. Watch up. Because if this isn't enough, uh, having to deal with uh, the Magellan Rex, uh, the captain's uh, eye condition has uh, deteriorated and the medical officer has suggested that he go ashore and get seen by a specialist so we've got to arrange for another helicopter from the force to come in and pick him up and take him ashore with a medical officer so the XO will take conduct for the ship and I'll move up to second in command and we'll take it from there you enjoy that? oh yes, it's, uh, it's always good to get a little bit of extra responsibility I'm not already drunk with power already about this ship and this ship's company is that there's a very broad appreciation of the whole picture um, so it's not very difficult to motivate them to do a thing like this at least that's the way it looks to me what they may say is perhaps a different matter however they know that um, if they want British sausages this is the only way to get them at the moment and that seems to be quite a highly motivating factor so far we've had some frozen provisions well obviously we don't want the frozen provisions to defrost we don't want the fresh stuff to deteriorate at all four thank you the other constraint we've got here is that these barrels of oil which are coming across, um, because we're getting it in barrels, we want to empty the barrels down into the, um, into, into the ship and return the, uh, the empty barrels, the empty drums, because they're no use to us and they're taking up space. We have to complete that operation before we complete the rat, otherwise we can't return the, uh, the drums. And meanwhile, uh, we're waiting to, to do a boarding as well, after this. Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, Scott is smiling on us today, I think. Are there any important stores this? This is... <laughs> yeah, you need this. You need a lot of this when you've had a good run ashore, don't you? You know, the old galley arse. Oh, oh, hey! <laughs> you want the galley arses, don't you? You have good old curry, like, but if you ask to do a lot of sunflowers, you need plenty of this stuff, all right? I don't know whether it's two-ply, though, because I need it. Stop playing with the camera. <laughs> Punctual stores. <laughs> 
There's a big inquiry going on there. 96 Yorkie bars have gone missing. They're looking for a big fat trucker who's lost his lorry or something like that. But 90, they found 48 of them. At the moment, the master alarms is searching the gash bags all through the ships to try and find the culprit. So uh, I, I just wait with bated breath to find out who's got them. There was a, a big box of milk bar Yorkies. Uh, 48 was taken. And when it was passing one of the upper deck lockers, people went in, consumed what they wanted, and disappeared. But where the Yorkers went? Not saying nothing. Not saying anything. Uh, don't know. Don't know. I'm got a clue. They might know. Oh! Information? <laughs> where the Yorkies go? They're in there. Chief Smith. Chief Stalkers. <laughs> yeah, I've just heard it. <laughs> In my restaurant, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat it, you shouldn't have to lift it. Lift it, huh? You split the flags, you realise you're going to have to clean the deck, don't you? Large box! <laughs> What's the uh, story on the Yorkie Bar scandal? Suss it. David, it's Martin. I just wanted to say thank you very much again, and uh, I don't know whether you've got my note along with that that, that package we sent, but um, as, as I said in there, it uh, really was marvellous to see you. We, uh, it means a great deal to us. As I said in there, maybe just another razz to you, but uh, to us it represents a great deal. We haven't uh, seen enough of you over the last five months, unfortunately. No, we appreciate your business, and many thanks again. Well, I'll tell you what I would like, David. I would like to see you ashore in Plymouth one day. Good afternoon, first hand speaking. Well done to everyone involved in today's replenishment at sea with Fort Austin. I know that it did go on slightly longer than I'd earlier anticipated. Some of you will have seen that the captain departed shortly after 10.30 this morning. His eye deteriorated last night and the medical officer decided that he should seek the opinion of a specialist ashore in Toronto. I hope to be in touch with the captain shortly, after which I'll give you an update on his condition. Well done again for the replenishment today. We did get over as much as we intended in the time, and as we hoped, we now have beer in the barrel and sausages in the larder. We're now proceeding at full speed to carry out a boarding of a Lebanese sheep carrier, although we don't yet know whether she's carrying livestock or in ballast. We'll be alongside her sometime after dark, approximately 2200. That's all. Inside your ship. Foster mother, foster mother, ship's unladen, sir. sir. No yeah, cargo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does seem to be a single sheep on the upper deck, though. What are you eating at us? He's got one, one sheep on deck, sir. Where? I think the internal inspection is uh, there by the guardrail. Just in, yeah, I was just sitting in the guardrail, just second cage up from the uh, the superstructure. Oh, He's Sorry. probably tomorrow's lunch. <laughs> one sheep each. It must be for slaughtering or something. It looks like a stuffed dummy, it's not moving. I suggest calling off himself for some internal inspection, sir. Well, yes. What well, I've heard, he'd be quite used to it. Did you ask him if, <laughs> Did you ask him if he had his wellies with him? Star reliever ahead, 2 2. Well, I believe he doesn't have any cargo on board apart from a single sheep. Have you heard that? <laughs> Is lightning getting any closer? Head landing. And half engine engaged. Yeah. And going for the last. We've got the wind sworn out to do as well, Nick. Roger. Good evening, first time speaking. I'm expecting the captain back on board at around 22.30. He has new medication and has been relieved of his eye patch. You will be pleased to know that although he still needs daily treatment, he has been past fit and ready to come back to sea for duty. That's all. How did you get on? We uh, finished at 1415, 46 loads. Oh, good. That came over onto the boat deck. So uh, and, and you've done a boarding since? And as soon as we broke away, we had the other merchantman sitting up alongside, just off Fort Austin, about four miles away. Went was, over was and did he that. just waiting patiently? He was waiting patiently, and then we got him to come up to the northwest, and we just stepped straight around her stern and went straight over. Right, well, let's go forward. Mm. Yeah. 
Good evening, first turn speaking. As we come to the end of this patrol period, well done for all the effort that's gone into our operations and area. We've conducted 13 boardings on just about everything from fruit carriers and oil tankers to ships carrying ores and metals, a humanitarian aid ship, and of course our recent loan sheep carrier. After all the hard work of the last 10 days, we can now look forward to a well-deserved run ashore in the Italian port of Brindisi. Our ETA is 1,700 hours, and we hope to be alongside by 1,800. And finally, one quick word, a reminder, please keep it up, make sure your behaviour ashore is, of, again, of the highest standard. That's all. The bars are open, help yourself, boys, and uh, here we are. You know, so it's um, breaks them and not It's not like two quid a bottle, anyway. So. <laughs> the last need to wind down. 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 Is that, is that all right? Thank you, yes, okay. There's great rivalry between whether you're captain of a destroyer or a frigate. You know, the frigate, the destroyer captain thinks he is more important, and the frigate captain says, no, you're not.
it's starting to show where we haven't been able to get at it with the high pink cat. The seaman finished all the bow, I'm happy with that, and you can see where they've been at it around about the exit. That's okay. Um, no, it's fine. I just wanted to have a, a general look because I haven't been up. You see that net up there? Of the rope hanging there? Sure. We can get that reef too. That's one, is it? Yeah, one of those, yeah. Actually, I'll have one of these as well. Yeah. <laughs> 1,200. 1,200. Very good night, actually. When I get up in the water after having been woken up by the stewards, you know, stagger down to my cabin and realise that um, I've got, I'm a dickhead written on my face, and so I'm embarrassing. <laughs> 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 there we go. Never mind. Leader Rag Martin, Dial Zero. A little short shed? Hanging out. Do tease all morning. Where did we go then? I stayed on board and had a quiet night in. Did you really? Well, I was on board and that's about it. Hanging out the fridge. Machine gun the fridge, I would say. Don't be in. Singing Ra Ra. Ra Ra Mickey G, Gloucester's greatest love machine. <laughs> Sad man. We're constantly turning out food all day, every day. You know, it's still three meals a day, whether we still piss from the night before or whatever, like, you know, it is on. I mean, we was partying till well, early hours this morning, and, and we know I'm duty. Mark knew we had to get up at five, but he was still here. I'm still here now, and I'll be here till I finish at eight o'clock tonight. Are there lots of, are there lots of uh, shoe shops? There is, actually. It's quite an exceptional quantity of shoe shops. I'm sure you guys are serious boots. I think someone said that being on a ship is like being in a prison where you got a chance of drowning. You go go to sea for how many days it is, and you're, you're working hard. You know, what I mean, may not physically working hard, but mentally you're on, you're on the go all the time. So when they get ashore, they just want to let off steam. You know, what I mean, get ashore and just get blasted, come and sleep it off. Everyone's going to release stress sometime. Cappuccino, please. Cappuccino? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You starting to feel uh, alive yet, Doc? Well... Yes, actually. Yeah. The Molly doing the trick. I had a Bloody Mary this morning, which really sorted me <laughs> out quite well. Everyone's just the ticket. Yeah. <laughs> and the size of Molly is really doing me some serious favours. Mm -hmm. You're not hiding behind those dark glasses at all, though. No, well, I don't like to reveal the fact that my eyes are pointing in different directions <laughs> to too many people. She's not nearly as good looking as Georgie. Make sure that goes in then. I can't look at a woman like that, you think? Yum, yum, yum. Your current bun? She's messed up big style, isn't she? She here. Weapons Engineering Mechanic Gladman. Report to the Master at Arms Office immediately. Thank you. Yellow HQ one. Yeah. Go ahead, call your throat. It's a very sort of unique environment in which, you know, for um, seven months you get a number of people just enclosed in a sort of tin can floating around, you know. And uh, the camaraderie, I've never come across anything like it before, really, you know. Spend that amount of time just with other people in that very sort of insular environment of a ship, you know. Spending ten days at sea where, I mean, you're just deprived of all sort of enjoyment really as far as I'm concerned. I mean you spend you know so long at sea that when you do go ashore you really like to lay your hair down and have a good hoolie. And uh, it's it's more made more for entertainment because you get people like Doctor who falls asleep everywhere we go. The good thing about drinking in the Navy is that your body has a chance to recover between runs ashore, you know. So I mean ten days you can really flush your system through and then when you come alongside, you know you can just, you know, try and inflict some serious damage again. Um. Well, I actually had a fairly good grounding in drinking, it has to be said. You know, I've been drinking for a number of years now, and, uh, this is really just putting the cup on it. I'm just sort of perfecting the art now. And uh, the Navy is a very good place to do that. Hi. Hi, mate. Hi. How are you? Hi. Are you just getting ready to go to work? Yeah. Right. I'm uh, a little bit late. I've been out running uh, this afternoon. Okay. And uh, I failed miserably last night. Uh, we went out for a pizza uh, down in the town. Yeah. And um, we had a couple of litres of wine with the pizza light. And ended up uh, singing last night at the karaoke bar. Oh, 
So, uh, it, was, it was a good night light, but I was hanging a little bit this morning. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Dad. Yeah. It's me, Mike. Hello, Mike. How are you? Yeah. All right. Oh, good. Good heavens. Well, I never. <laughs> well, so Friday, 21st of October, uh, Trafalgar Day. Early start for us, sailing at 5.30. Prepare for flying at uh, 8.30, sir, which will remain extant throughout. And at the same time, close up to our action stations. It will be a standard transfer of ammunition to Weapon State Monty. We're coming down on the Thursday. Yeah. Get some things somewhere. I think um, Michael's going to bring... Um... Oh, done on, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Remember me? I'm a, I'm a short, dumpy one. Yeah. Um... Oh, you sent this flexi letter then? Loads of tooling in it. Oh, bargain. That'll keep me going then. Well, the ship's in area, in area Montenegro. We have the Montcalm in Iceman, who we will relieve tomorrow. In Digger the Avuts, in Blocker the Deo, in Climber North, the Victoria. We have a, a quiet uh, drink tonight because we have to be back by midnight. Yeah. So just going to have a couple of glasses of wine or whatever. And, uh, but you said that last night. You know, uh, failed again. The warm front is moving east north easterly and is expected to lie effectively right, uh, right through our area come 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, bringing out uh, fairly classic um, <coughs> frontal conditions. There are going to be warnings of uh, strong winds, south, south easterly winds, up, probably up to about 30 knots. It's absolutely persisting down here at the moment. No, it is. Yeah. I'm looking out now, it's, uh, on duty today, I've just nipped off to make a phone call. Uh-huh. And it is absolutely dribbling down. And then we had a nice day here today. Oh. Well, it's about time you had one, really. Oh, I've yeah. had about six months worth. <laughs> we haven't had a bad summer, mind. Oh, no. Right, I think that was my pip start. Okay. Yeah, it was. Yeah. All right, be yeah. good. Yeah, look after yourself, sir. Trust me. Right. See you later. I love you, mate. See you later. No, they're okay, mate. They're fine. They made me smile. You're daft, them. So, I'll, I'll let you crack on and um, I'll call you back again tonight. Okay? And I'll try not to. All right, I love you then. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye, love you too. Bye. Love you. Love you. Love you. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. Well, I'm putting it down. Goodbye. Love you. Bye.